Abraham Lucas may end up being the best tackle in the NFL over the next couple of seasons. Like there are scouts in the NFL that truly believe that and I kind of agree as well. What Lucas does on tape is impressive and today we're going to analyze that tape. We're going to really get into what it is that makes this guy such an interesting football player. One of the things that sticks out to me right away is the small little detail that goes into the game of football that Lucas does at a top tier level. And a good example of that is what you see on this play right here. Abraham Lucas is going to do what is referred to as using independent hands and you see he's going to throw a right hand punch first and then the defense lineman is going to counter and then Lucas's right hand is going to drop and then he's going to throw the left hand and from there he really just anchors down and shuts this defensive end down. That rep right there is so damn impressive on tape and I don't think people realize that. I don't think Lucas is getting the credit that he truly deserves. The way he plays the game of football, he plays like he's been a veteran for 10 years. Like the guy's are very, very impressive and I truly believe this season, people are going to start recognizing Lucas as one of the best tackles in the NFL. And today we're going to analyze his tape from his rookie year. Yes, he gave up a bunch of sacks, we'll get into that, but we'll also get into what makes this guy such a great player. I'm really fired up for this one. Let's go ahead and get right into it. One of the things that Abraham Lucas does really well is he changes up his pass sets. Using this play right here as an example, he does something that not a lot of tackles feel comfortable being able to do. On this play right here, you guys can see it's obviously a pass, which means Lucas has a pass set, which he would get vertical on. But notice how the defensive lineman here is in a wide nine. He is far away from Lucas. So instead of letting the defensive lineman fully load up, get his power behind him and try to go through Lucas, Lucas is actually going to take the fight to the defensive lineman. He's not going to let this guy fully get that power behind his bull rush. He's not going to allow that guy to really get fully into it. Instead, he's going to get vertical, but at the same time, he's going to take the fight to the defensive lineman. He's going to take one step back, and from there, the defensive lineman does not expect Lucas to take the fight directly to this guy. He doesn't expect it. And this is what I mean about changing up your pass sets. That's not a normal pass set. To run towards a guy is not something we've seen a whole lot in the NFL, right? This is something that has been happening more recently where the top three guys understand the importance of mixing it up. Uh, it's the same thing as if you're a defensive lineman. On one play, you may rip. On one play, you may double hand swipe. On one play, you may try to swim over a guy. Well, as a tackle, instead of always setting up in a vertical set, some guys will mix it in with the 45 and then they'll go right at a guy. Sometimes they'll do a true 45. Sometimes they'll even jump set. Guys are mixing it up more. And the thing is, is for Lucas to be able to do this in his rookie season, means he understands this concept of being able to do different things at different times and really keep those defensive ends guessing. Now, obviously, not every player does this, and I think this is something that's unique. So this is a really interesting rep right here. With that being said, let's go ahead and get to the next play. All right, you guys, check this next rep out. Lucas is going to do a really nice job. Third down, true pass set. Uh, you're going to see him do a nice job handling Leonard Floyd, really just shutting him down. Floyd, in my opinion, is a very good pass rusher and you can see Floyd is trying to give a fake to the inside. He wants Lucas to lean just a little bit so that he could hit that edge. And one of the things that I've seen Lucas do is stay very patient, right? He doesn't fall for these type of things. He doesn't fall for the fakes, the hezzies, and all the little things that oftentimes defensive ends are doing nowadays. This is a really, really nice rep. He gets out of his stance. He stays calm. He stays collective. He doesn't have that panic where he needs to go towards a guy too early. He doesn't try to throw anything until he fully knows that the defense lineman has made his move. And at the same time, he's a great job getting his hands on the guy. He's not leaning, so he doesn't have that worry that he may fall forward if the defensive lineman tries to bend past him. On top of that, if you watch all of Lucas's pass blocking and just kind of how he gets out and his technique, all of it really stays consistent, right? And I think that's a big part of playing offensive tackle. You got to stay consistent. So that is one of the things I really, really like with him. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into this next rep here. Alrighty guys, you got another wide nine where the defensive lineman is way far outside of Lucas. And once again, watch him change the pass set. Once again, he's going to go at the defensive end. He's going to really take the fight to him. Again, this is such a small little part of playing tackle, but it goes a long way. You know, when you're a defensive end and you have in your mind that I'm going to take about four steps before I make contact with this tackle who's going to get vertical. And when we make contact, I'm going to hit him with an inside move. 
or I'm going to hit him with a spin move. But instead of getting vertical, when you take that fight to him, that defensive end doesn't know what to do, right? Because you're kind of surprising him because you're making contact with him as opposed to waiting for him to make contact with you. Just a really, really nice job. And you can really see that these defensive ends don't really expect Lucas to come out towards him. Uh, they kind of don't have any counter to what he does, right? Some guys will hit you with a spin or a swap or a combination of two or three different things. These guys right here are just getting stuck because they're not really sure what the hell's happened, right? How Lucas just takes the fight right to him. That right there is damn impressive in my opinion. Another thing that Lucas does really well is anchor down in pass pro. Uh, one of the things you'll notice on tape is he does a really nice job dropping the anchor. So what we mean by that is as he makes contact with Carlos Dunlap here, Dunlap's going to try to bull rush him. And you're going to see the anchor drop, the hips drop right there. When these tackles widen those legs, they drop the hips down. It's referred to as anchoring down and a lot of tackles can do this right this is like the very basis of playing offensive line you got to be able to anchor down but one of the things that separates really good offensive linemen from really bad offensive linemen is the inability to anchor right and in this instance lucas stops this defensive end in his tracks right down laps trying to bull rush the right tackle here and the right tackle is going to shut that down he's going to anchor and dunlap just doesn't have the power to get past that anchor you see Dunlap is stopped right there, right? He's basically, at this point, standing straight up. And that's because Lucas has shut that down. Now, obviously, the quarterback gets pressure here. The right guard ends up losing. Um, and then from there, obviously, the quarterback takes off running. Dunlap gets a little bit of pressure. But this is why sometimes the hurries and the sacks that an offensive lineman may give up is overrated. And you guys will see as we kind of look at some of the reps in which Lucas gave up sacks. You guys will see why stats are overrated when it comes to offensive linemen, right? The good quarterbacks, they may be able to get out of the pocket and do things that some of the bad quarterbacks can't do. I'm not saying Geno Smith is a bad quarterback. I'm just saying, generally speaking, right? Patrick Mahomes is going to get the ball out quicker than, let's say, Derek Carr. So with that being said, Patrick Mahomes' offensive tackles may give up less sacks than Derek Carr's offensive tackles, right? So always keep in mind that quarterbacks have an impact on how well statistically an offensive lineman may do but i'm here to tell you guys man trust the tape it is the one thing that you can really go back to when you watch an offensive tackle and with lucas you really see all these different things that i think make him a really really good football player all right you guys just to really get into why i think this guy's such a great offensive tackle i want you guys to think about what the defensive end is thinking and how he thinks he's going to be able to beat lucas Right, You see how he moves his body, how he tries to set up Lucas. And generally speaking, if you're going up against a rookie, some of this stuff works, right? But generally speaking, you're not going up against a phenomenal rookie, right? You're going up against an average rookie. So what Dunlap's going to do is he's going to square his shoulders and he's going to try to hezzy to the inside. If you guys missed him, just back it up a couple frames. You see right there, Dunlap's going to move his shoulders back to the inside. He's trying to make Lucas get caught in a situation where he ends up leaning. He ends up falling for that fake. Lucas does not. At the same time, because Lucas is a really nice job using independent hands, he's consistent in his technique. He's not going to get caught leaning. He's going to throw the right hand and it doesn't land. And then he's going to throw the left hand and that doesn't really land either. But if you guys just back it up, the fact that when he throws his right hand, he isn't leaning. The fact that he misses but he has a really good base and he can follow it up with the left hand and that doesn't really land either, but it's just enough for him to get his hands right back to the inside. The little detail really goes a long way. And I think with Lucas, that's absolutely true. Like it's not often that Dunlap is in a true one-on-one -on -one pass for situation and he gets shut down by a rookie. But again, Abraham Lucas does a really nice job with the independent hands, the consistent technique, he does a really, really, really nice job. And this is why I absolutely love this guy. With that being said, let's go ahead and get into the next rep. Alrighty, guys, I do want to shift focus and let's get into some of what Lucas does in the run. I think he's a very, very good run blocker. And I think he does a lot of good things when it comes to power blocking. And you really see it on reps like this. He's going to double team there, get up to the linebacker and do a really nice job sealing it off. And then, of course, the mental processing allows him to help push the running back into the end zone. Uh, but I really want to break this play down just a little bit. 
Right away, he does a great job with the right guard, double teaming the three technique defensive tackle. As he double teams, he's going to recognize number 52, Denzel Perryman, kind of just stand here in the gap, which means that for him, he has to get off of this block here and then make his way to number 52. And not just block 52, but he really has to seal it off. And you see him do just that on this play. He's going to get on to Perryman, get his hips on the linebacker, and just like that, you see him seal it off. You can see that because Lucas is able to stop the linebacker here, that's going to give the running back that length, right? It gives him the crease to be able to hit that gap. And of course, as the running back runs this, you see Lucas get off the block, find his running back still up, and he's going to help push this guy into the end zone. I mean, that's just a really, really nice job. Let's go ahead and get into the next one. Alrighty, guys, so we got an outside pitch to the left here, and I want you guys to watch how Lucas reaches on this defensive lineman here and really flips his hips to stop this guy now this is a great double team by the tight end he really gets low really helps lucas really get up to this guy uh, but lucas does a really nice job being able to seal it off and this play hits for nine yards to me as lucas gets out of his stance it's very clear he understands angle he understands body positioning just a really nice wide angle right you really see him with that right arm explode out there takes that angle the tight end does a really nice job getting low, hitting this defensive lineman on the hips. And of course, you can see Lucas flip the hips there and get to the outside of number 94. And from there, he basically seals this off. This is a really, really nice job, in my opinion, to be able to shut that down. And you can see the running back cuts it right there. Now, I'm not sure why the tight end doesn't take on number 25. If he stops 25, you give the running back a one-on-one -on -one situation with number 20. I think the play would have worked better, but you can see the tight end ends up going out to number 20. Uh, and 25 goes unblocked, and he basically is one of the two guys that makes the play. Uh, but just a really nice job once again by Lucas, right? Uh, to me, the mental part of Abraham Lucas is arguably his best asset, right? We talked about some of his pass pro and how he does a great job with some of the advanced things in pass pro. But it's really his mindset and the mental factors that allow him to be great in pass pro and those same things apply to the run game right you see plays like this where he does a really really nice job reaching Alrighty, guys check this rep out you're going to get a double team here by lucas and the guard and then from there lucas is going to climb the next level he's going to pick off 45 here who's going to end up going towards the left this is a really nice job to double and pick off the linebacker but for me the best part of this is the body positioning right uh, the fact that when he attacks the linebacker, instead of trying to hit the linebacker and seal him off this way, he's going to actually get towards the right side here of the linebacker. And it's a good job with the heads up awareness to be able to seal it off at least one way. So the running back can hit one side or the other. Really nice job. And just like that, you're going to see the running back ends up picking up 30 yards on this play. Lucas does a really nice job on this play here with the block. Really nice job, big part of why this play ends up hitting. And not only does his double team absolutely crush that three technique defensive lineman, it throws this guy out of there. I mean, look at the double team here and look at where the guy ends up. Absolutely displaces him, gets to the inside of 45. To me, that's an absolute beautiful rep right there. Let's go ahead and get to the next play. All right, you guys, check this next rep out. Really nice job double teaming, and then he's going to get up to the next level, and he's going to pick off Kenneth Murray Jr., the inside linebacker of the Chargers. Really nice job to make sure this play hits. Uh, it's an outside zone to the left, and it actually hits for a 74-yard touchdown. And a big part of this play hitting is, of course, the right tackle. Really nice job with the hand. That hand right there allows the guard to overtake number 98. A lot of people are going to think that the hand doesn't really do much, but it absolutely does. It makes sure that the guy can get onto the side of 98 to seal it off. And then, of course, he climbs to that next level, and he's going to pick off Kenneth Murray. Now, it's not the perfect block. He doesn't absolutely stop him, but he gets just enough of him with the right hand. He holds him just enough where it's not a hold, it's not a flag, but Kenneth Murray is not able to get there. So he does just enough where the running back's able to pick up a 74-yard touchdown. Of course, the best part of this play are the hands right here, as the big fella knows that he helped just create a 74-yard touchdown for his running back. To me, it's a really, really nice job. Let's go ahead and get into the next rep. 
Alrighty guys, just to kind of wrap this video up, I want to go over some of the sacks that Lucas gave up. According to Pro Football Focus, he gave up 10 sacks, but not all 10 were on him, right? Now, with that being said, there were a few that were actually on him, and we're going to look at those sacks specifically. On this rep here, this defense fan does a great job. He's going to fire out of his stands, and he's going to jab hard from the outside back to the inside. And honestly, Lucas ends up losing this rep because of the fact that he was just a little slow out of his stance. And as Lucas was getting vertical, and as he was really trying to get into his 45 degree set, the defense lineman quickly jumped to the inside and Lucas did not have his feet set. So you see him, he ends up kind of leaning. His base is just a little too far wide. And he's not able to get back to the inside and really stop number 94. Of course, you also have that little stunt right there between these two linemen as well. To me, this is a losing rep, and this is a sack given up by the right tackle. Now, to be fair, uh, the left tackle also loses to that defensive end there. Defense fans going to chop the arms down of cross. So basically, sometimes when a guy loses a rep, you don't always necessarily give up a sack. But if two guys lose a rep, it's more likely that one of the guys is going to end up giving up a sack, right? quarterback likely only gets out of one sack on any given play uh, but this one here is on lucas you gotta clean that one up let's go ahead and get to the next rep all right you guys getting into this next sack a uh, very similar situation to the last sack you're gonna see lucas is gonna try to get out here and in this instance he's gonna get caught just leaning too much the defensive end explodes out of his stance gets out there and is able to just speed rush lucas and as you see the rest of the pocket kind of collapses as well and smith ends up going down uh, but once again, this is a losing rep. So he's got to clean up some of the small things in his technique. Uh, once again, just backing this up. You see as he's getting into his set, he kind of leans right there. And the defensive end does a really nice job being able to counter. And from there, the defensive end is able to get the sack. So that's a really nice job by him. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Alrighty, guys. Now, earlier I did say that Lucas gave up 10 sacks, but not all 10 were on him specifically. Here's an example of that. PFF is a really solid tool but they don't understand every single situation every single offense all the rules that go within that offense and this is an example of that right a pff has to label this sack to someone but when the safety here steps up to the line of scrimmage pre-snap and he shows blitz it is up to the tight end to recognize that and be able to pick that up as the right tackle gets out here and picks up the defensive end you have a three technique over the right guard as a tight end, you have to have your head up and you have to be able to see the blitzing safety. That too. The guy doesn't blitz from that stacked position. He blitzes by coming up to the line of scrimmage. So that right there changes things up. The tight end has to be able to see that and he has to be able to sit back and pick it up. And you can see that Lucas takes on that defensive end, right? You can see Lucas ends up taking on number 75 here and Hufanga really just comes off the edge unblocked. You can see Lucas turns his head towards the safety uh, obviously he recognizes quickly that the tight end ended up releasing without blocking uh, the quarterback takes a massive hit but he is able to recover the football again this is not on the right tackle right but pff will label this as a sack to lucas and this is why i don't 100 percent agree with pro football focus but it is one of the best tools we have to kind of uh, measure individual players but i will also state this i've seen all 10 of his sacks he did not give up 10 sacks last year, right? But I did want to point this play out. Let's go ahead and get to the next rep. Alrighty, guys. Final rep, breaking down some of the sacks that Lucas gave up. I think this one's a nice play to kind of look at. You're going to see Max Crosby basically bull rush Abraham Lucas. And he's going to take this guy right back into the quarterback. That's a really nice rep by one of the best edge defenders in the NFL. Uh, and this is also a nice learning rep for Lucas. You know, one of the things Lucas does really well is he gets out of his st stance very soundly, very nice technique. He's very nice with his footwork, very calm, very collective. But one of the things he has to learn is not every single defensive end is going to play the same type of game. Some guys may use their hands. Some guys may use certain type of pass rush moves, whether that's speed or power. And you have to kind of expect it all, right? Uh, I'm not sure if Lucas expected Max to just straight up bull rush him because this is not something Max does a whole lot, but he does do it here. And you can see Max gets underneath Lucas and you can see him basically take Lucas and drive him right back into the quarterback, which eventually allows him to get the sack. But Lucas just has to kind of learn a little bit more. He just has to kind of 
uh, continue to develop. Uh, and I do want to state this, you know, the last four to five plays we looked at were negative plays, right? They're losing reps. And Lucas had more than just those plays that were losing reps. But the thing with Lucas is he has so many great reps. He has so many elite things he does on tape that the upside's there. And, and you know, even a guy like Panay Sewell, who a lot of people already believe is one of the top two or three right tackles in the NFL, struggled a little bit his rookie season, right? He gave up sacks that rookie season. He wasn't great. But year two, he really took off and he became one of the best tackles in the NFL. And I think Lucas has that same trajectory where he could become one of the best right tackles in the NFL. It's all about the work and effort he puts into it. I know he just had surgery. So it's all about that recovery, how he's able to work out, get stronger, come back in healthy, and just continue to develop. I hope you guys enjoyed this video. If this is the first time you're on this channel, please consider subscribing. We have a catalog of Seahawks content already on this channel. I'll pin the playlist of every single Seahawks video we've done in the comments below. Make sure you guys check some of those out. We will be following the Seahawks as this season begins. We'll be doing some offensive line as well as defensive line content. I hope you guys enjoy this video. Thumbs up, subscribe, and I'll see you guys next time with another video.